Hello, this is Matt from TracyandMatt.co.uk and here I am with the Samsung Galaxy Note. I'm going to do a quick unboxing video for you. We've already done the full review, so unusually we're doing it slightly in the other order, but the uh, review unit we had was uh, unboxed and pre-retail. So we're going to do a quick unboxing. So the handset or tablet, or both in actual fact, is on top. Come back to that in a second. Also in the box we have the warranty card, the quick start guide covering the basics, and uh, that is all printed in colour as well, it's pretty handy. And then we have a USB to micro USB sync charge cable. And a USB charger. So, they've actually put it into two parts so that it fits neatly in the box. And that slides together like so. UK 3 pin plug, which means that it collapses down and uh, fits in the box neatly. We then have rubber uh, headphone grommets for the supplied wired headset, which we're going to take a quick look at. So, uh, four pole, three and a half mil jack. Then there is this inline microphone and volume control module. Uh, also has a push button on there, which will uh, basically works as answer and hang up of calls. Hole on the back is the actual microphone, and then a bit tangled up. Here we go. There's the actual headphones themselves. Quite neat. Um, they are quite weighty, so I suspect they've got a quite a large magnet in there. And we'll uh, actually take. I'll try those out later on as well. But uh, nice white wired headset that comes with it. So take a look at the note itself. And I'm going to peel off the screen protector on the front and the protector on the back so we can see it a bit more clearly. Um, it's a, it is actually um, technically a phone because you can make phone calls on it, um, but obviously it's tablet size. So taking a look around, on the front we have a 2 megapixel secondary camera um, for video conferencing and that kind of stuff and a loudspeaker at the top. And uh, ambient light sensor and proximity sensor all also stashed away at the top there as well. Um, obviously a little bit hard to pick those out on the video. Then we have a 5.3 inch display, so I'm going to have to move that fairly uh, far away from the camera to fit that all in, but a 5.3 inch display which is super AMOLED capacitive touch screen, multi-touch, uh, it's supported there. 800 by 1200 pixels, it is among the highest um, resolution displays, certainly of that size, um, that we've come across. And to put that in perspective, that's higher res than the um, iPad iPad is uh, 780 by 1024, um, so this is actually higher res in a smaller, more compact um, form factor. So uh, that's uh, two, two, 285 pixels per inch for those that are interested. So 800 by 1200, really good display. Below that we have a single push button, physical push button. Looking around to the left, we have an up and down volume control. Swing around to the bottom, the micro USB sync charge connector, and a hole there which is the microphone. Then we have the S Pen on the side here, so we actually do have a like a stylus, it also has a push button. Uh, there are no batteries in that, it works by like a, basically a type of induction. Power button on the right hand side. On the top, 3.5mm headphone connector for uh, obviously putting in the wired headset that comes with it, or using indeed your own um, headphones that use a 3.5mm jack. On the back, an 8 megapixel autofocus camera and LED flash, and it is capable of recording uh, 1080p video at 30 frames a second, which is pretty impressive. So on the back, we have the loudspeaker there at the bottom. Now uh, the back cover should just peel off like so, and the back cover is fairly plastic. Well, it is plastic, it's not fairly plastic. It's very flimsy, but obviously when it's in place, it's not such a big problem. And then the battery. Is like so, very large battery and is 2,500 milliamp hours, fairly weighty as well. Space for a micro SD card supporting up to 32 gig SDHC memory cards, and then the space for our SIM card there as well. Battery pops back in, and we'll pop the back cover on. It's just a case of just popping that all down. Once it's in place, though, it doesn't really notice that. Uh, you know, it's flimsy, it's fairly secure, it's got clasps all the way around the outside, so uh, it does stay in place right really reasonably well. So let's see if we can power up. Hopefully there's some power in this uh, battery. There we go, and we'll just wait for that to start. 
and whilst that happens let me run down the rest of the specification it is quad band for GSM and tri band for HSDPA it's going to work pretty much in most countries when you take it roaming dimensions obviously it's a very large device um, to cross over between a tablet and a phone so it's uh, nearly 150 millimeters actually so it's 149 millimeters from top to bottom 83 millimeters wide but a really thin that covers not quite back on there we go really thin hand um, device though it's under 10 millimeters 9.7 millimeters now despite its size and um, obvious the fact that there's a you know, really large battery in there despite all that it's only 178 grams which actually makes it feel quite light because of its size um, it, you do expect it to be somewhat uh, heavier but indeed it is only 178 grams impressive as I say super AMOLED display in there and uh, that's actually quite uh, apparent when you first turn it on even um, because uh, the colors even on this green Android uh, are coming out really vividly so it's very impressive it is Gorilla Glass on the front there as well, so it's really scratch, uh, very scratch resistant, so that's pretty cool. Processor, we've got a 1.4 GHz uh, A9 processor in there, and that is dual core, so a 1.4 GHz ARM A9 processor, and also there's a uh, GPU in there, um, and um, Mali GPU, uh, for actually the graphics and all that kind of stuff, and uh, Android OS 2.3 Gingerbread sitting on there as well. Uh, in terms of the internal memory, this is the 16, I believe this is a 16 gig model. They're available in 16 and 32 gigs anyway, and it has 1 gig of RAM, so it should run along pretty nicely. We'll do a little benchmark on that in just a moment. In terms of other stuff, we've got a built-in FM stereo radio with RDS. Um, we also have built-in Wi-Fi support in uh, BG and N standards, and also DLNA and Wi-Fi Direct and Wi-Fi hotspot modes, and also Bluetooth 3.0 with uh, HS mode. And finally, we also have built-in GPS. So let me just turn that back on. And we'll take a look at some of the bits on here. So touch the Android to begin. We're going to connect to a Wi-Fi network because we're going to want to actually do a little demo of some of the bits on here. So we'll add a Wi-Fi network. There we go, and we'll connect to ours. So really, really large QWERTY keyboard there, as you can see, and I can rotate round the other way as well so in landscape really generous size so even people with really large fingers and th uh, fat thumbs like myself are going to find that not too much of a problem to tap away on that screen so let's go ahead and do that so we go ahead and obtain an IP address and we are connected one thing I will mention while I was actually uh, using that and using the on-screen keyboard to tap that in the there is a, um, um, a haptic feedback through the actual on-screen press bu push buttons um, and it's really really quite good it feels uh, like a really tight vibrate inside um, not you know, too uh, fancy dancy so we're going to skip setting up the Google account uh, whoops I'm gonna skip setting up the Google account and choose all the other things pretty much we're going to accept all the defaults as much as possible and start up because obviously we do have the TouchWiz user interface on here which uh, is present on uh, almost all of the Samsung um, Galaxy range of handsets already it's picked up uh, a location and we've got the weather there obviously the clock and the time above Google search bar with a voice search Galaxy Note we've got uh, Readers Hub, Social Hub, uh, S Planner Maps Android Market and also along the bottom we have phone contacts uh, phone dialer actually massive massive screen um, and massive massive buttons for the phone dialer being capacitive touch screen works really quite well and as you can see at the bottom there when I'm actually touching there are two capacitive buttons on either side one for menu one for Mac back as well pushing the button in the bottom should actually take us back to this screen at any time when we're uh, actually elsewhere uh, so we've got contacts, S memo, uh, messaging and applications now the S memo should be all about drawing on screen so um, we can actually make some notes touching on the screen Oop, I had a note that would help there we go and I don't know what the button does, it doesn't do a great deal here we just save that. And we can do other stuff here. Obviously, it looks like we can do some drawing. 
and maps and some other bits and pieces as well. But hey, we get the idea. That's what the stylus is all about. It's being able to write on the screen, send notes and write stuff down. Um, and some other stuff as well. I'm sorry, there's some more cool features and I'm not really selling it very well. But uh, I'm sure you get the idea. It's all the applications. There's going to be quite a few here. And obviously, it, the fact that it is a large display means that there's plenty on screen at once. Which makes it look kind of overwhelming, perhaps. But there are pr plenty of applications there to play around with. Most of it looks pretty straightforward and standard. So one thing I definitely want to take a look at is the internet. Because obviously with that large display, it's going to make it really excellent for using online. So let's go over and take a look at our site. And I have to say, I mean, I personally think for this is more of a tablet than a phone. I know you can make phone calls with it, but I think I would feel quite a plonker actually holding this up uh, to my ear and walking down the street with it. But nevertheless, I suppose it's capable. It does give you the flexibility. Page is loading reasonably fast. Talking about the motion, uh, motion tilt, I don't really want to use the motion. Uh, it enables to actually use the uh, fingers on the screen to scroll. Um, don't really think that's a, a useful feature, to be perfectly honest with you. But there we go, the page is loaded. It loaded really fast. We're obviously using Wi-Fi and broadband rather than actually using a SIM card, but nevertheless, uh, rendered pretty quickly. The AMOLED, Super AMOLED display is amazing, frankly. Colors around uh, the yellows and reds here and the uh, blue and orange of, uh, of our heading up the top there, uh, absolutely stunning. And the fact that it's an 800 wide uh, in this portrait orientation means that even this really small text on the site which uh, the camera's having struggling to actually uh, focus on but even that is absolutely totally legible but even more so when we rotate this way around so web browsing on here is going to be an absolute pleasure you've got two finger zooming and well I actually actually there we go two finger zooming so you zoom in and out double tap as well is supported for zoom in and out but there we go, they've got the full screen mode. Very cool. So come back out of there. And let's also take a quick look at YouTube. I'm sure people are going to want to watch videos on this type of a handset as well. So we'll do a quick search for Leo D, which is my YouTube alias. So we've got a selection of uh, videos there. So let's just pick one there, Samsung Galaxy Ace. See how quickly that buffers. There we go. Buffered and played really quickly. Go into the landscape orientation for full screen. And so you go back the other way. This is a standard implementation of the YouTube uh, client for Android, but it works very well. Going back here, we will go to Android Market and just sign into the Google account. We'll just sign in. Accept the uh, terms and conditions, finish the setup. Take a little while to load there. There we go. So it is a standard implementation of Android Market, but it looks kind of strange or kind of different loading on a really large display. But there we go, we have a list of applications by different each different genre. And same with games there. And then we have My Apps, which it's telling me that there's some updates for Gmail and some other bits here that update for YouTube, Google Maps and so on. But I'm going to do a quick search for Quadrant. And let's run a quick benchmark on here. Download and run a quick benchmark, as I say, with the 1.4 GHz dual core processor. One would expect it to run pretty nippy. Pulling down at the top, as I've just done so there, it gives us uh, status updates and notifications, so it's telling me that there are some updates available, Gmail has been updated, and Quadrant has been downloaded and installed. At the top, I can turn on Wi-Fi, or turn it on and off, Bluetooth on and off, GPS on and off, turn it into silent, and lock the auto-rotation. That's pretty useful. It'll stop me having to worry about that rotating. That'd be particularly useful if you're lying in bed reading a book, as with the Kindle. It'll stop the display rotating when you don't want it to. 
So there we go, that has installed Quadrant. So let's go and take a look at that and run the full benchmark. Typically run this a couple of times or certainly around 10 times before we actually commit to uh, benchmark results within the review. That's running really rapidly. 50 and 60 frames a second now. Despite having a massive screen and obviously having to work a little bit harder to draw on that massive display. Working rather well. Uh, 60 between 60 and 70 frames a second with the planet and moon animation in 3D and the DNA string at 40 to 45 frames a second there as well running pretty rapid so let's see our results uh, and that's awesome in fact if you can see that there the results are 3641 you can see it absolutely eclipses the Nexus 1 and uh, Droid Droid X, and that is the highest benchmark result I've, I've ever seen. Now, um, I've actually recently reviewed the HTC Sensation XE, which has a 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor, and I actually commented that, that, that 2000, about 2600 or 2800, um, that's be that benchmark result was um, pretty high, but this has absolutely trounced it. Over a thousand points, or about a thousand points higher than the HTC XE, Sensation XE. An amazing result, um, one that I've not seen quite so high, I've never seen one that high, so fantastic. One thing we'll take a quick look at is Google Maps, just to see GPS fix, uh, location to within 60 meters has already come up. Uh, standard implementation of Google Maps, where we can use two fingers to rotate and zoom in and out and all that kind of stuff, so pretty cool. And we'll go back home. Just take a quick look to see if there's anything else in here. So we've got FM radio and a few other bits and pieces. We will just take a quick look at the camera. I don't have anything that exciting to take pictures of, but we'll just use the lid of the box because it has a little colour on it. So controls, we can change from shooting stills to shooting video with the switch at the side. And so we can record 1080p video there as well. We've got camera controls for the flash so we can have forced off, forced on or auto, so it's set to auto. We can switch between the different cameras, so the front facing and rear facing camera. And then we've got different settings at the side here as well for the different shooting modes and exposure values and resolution and all that kind of stuff. Touching on the screen will actually focus on that area you've touched upon, and then pressing the button on the side, takes a quick snap. Pretty straightforward. You can go into the library at the side, and the quality isn't bad at all. And that's not bad considering I actually still got the sticker over the lens as well, so uh, does a reasonably good job. So that's a, a quick look at the Samsung Galaxy Note. Um, we have a full review on site if you want to take a look at uh, see what we think of it and uh, Gareth's verdict of the Galaxy Note head over to tracymat.co.uk for the full review um, if you want to have a look for the full review if you want to follow us on Twitter we're twitter.com slash tracymat or facebook.com slash tracymat.co.uk if you want to ask us any questions about this or any other handsets and tablets we're reviewing please feel free we really like to hear from you. I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracymap.co.uk. But for now, thanks for watching.